Hello and welcome or welcome back to the channel and prepare to strap yourselves into this three-part review of this year's K-pop comebacks and debuts so far. In a similar fashion as to how I decided what order I was going to watch Barbenheimer in, it's ladies first. So as you've seen from the title, I will be going over my thoughts and opinions of a couple of girl group comebacks, which I had a lot to say about. Then in part two, I will talk about boy group comebacks, and then lastly, part three will contain some shorter thoughts on other comebacks I checked out. Just to give you an idea of how much K-pop I had to catch up on after I finished the exams, I had created a YouTube playlist of all of the music videos I hadn't watched yet, and it racked up to about 190 videos. And even the script for this three-part review is over 20 pages long. So grab a snack and a drink, Get comfortable and let's dig into my unsolicited and lengthy opinions about recent girl group comebacks and debuts. Don't come for me, but at first I did not like this song at all and did not listen to it all the way through again for months. But then I came to the realisation that I didn't give the song a chance because I was too in love with Ditto. I guess all of the TikToks and reels I randomly saw every day kind of acted like exposure therapy and it was certainly effective. Whenever that chorus drops now, I instantly go into full song and dance because it is just too darn catchy. I've said this before, but I adore, no pun intended, New Jeans' approach to music. Like their whole maxim is less is more. After an entire generation of noise music, New Jeans, as well as others, brought back minimalism. One thing I am iffy about, like most people, is their creative direction. For the most part, I love New Jeans' whole aesthetic and visual concept. I don't know the right words to use to describe it, but it's very indie and very whimsical, but it also feels like very rooted in reality. Not to mention it reminds me of FX and Luna, two of my favourite girl groups of all time. But there are some very glaring problems that stem from their creative director. Their ETA trailer especially caught my attention after seeing people criticise it. At first I thought it just stood for estimated time of arrival and didn't think twice about the car in the video because I thought it made sense. But after digging into the names listed in the video and reading what people have said have made me really confused why their creative team would take inspiration from something so deplorable and even traumatic to some people and use it for the aesthetic. To make it clear, this is not a critique on the New Jeans members. This is solely a critique that I lay on their creative director and creative team. It happened with Cookie and the questionable lyrics sung by underaged idols. It happened with the portrayal of mental illness in Oh My God. And now it's happening with their new comeback. I would love to look past these issues and enjoy the music and the comeback, but given that it's the third time that they've done something creatively, questionable, it makes me feel a bit uncomfortable. But then again, this is just how I feel. I'm not one to force my opinion on others and it's fine if you don't feel the same way. I have seen people say that Adore always uses rage marketing for their comebacks. I don't think that's entirely true given the fact that they dropped attention with zero notice and Ditto didn't really receive much attention from the marketing department. But hypothetically, if Adore does use rage marketing to build hype for comebacks, I think that's a really poor way of marketing the group and also disrespects them as it shows either the little faith they have in the girls' ability or it shows how exploitative the company is in wanting to earn more profits by angering the masses. But again, this is purely speculative. I really do love this group and I think it's obvious to everyone that they have something very special to give. And now with this new comeback with New Jeans, Super Shy, Get Up, ETA, Cool With You and ASAP, like, it's official, they're the new summer queens of this generation. Super Shy was such a callback to their debut era and I am so in love with that chorus. And the music video for New Jeans is just so adorable and I love that they've collaborated with something that suits their image and audience. This is probably an unpopular opinion, but I think HYBE should have put more effort into getting the La Seraphim members brand deals and ambassadorships instead of New Jeans. 
Like one, because of their age, two, because it makes sense with their concept, and three, because in general the audience for La Seraphim, I'm assuming, is older than New Jeans's. And I don't think it's a good nor ethical idea to be pushing these expensive luxury brands onto really young people. Partnering with McDonald's, Coca Cola, and the Powerpuff Girls just makes sense with New Jeans' image of being these super relatable and down to earth group of teenagers who like to do what normal teenagers do. But back to actually reviewing their most recent double feature release. It's no surprise that I love both ETA and Cool With You. ETA is super fun and it reminds me of Attention and Oh My God's music videos. And I love that Cool With You sounds so mature. And of course, I love the Greek mythological influences in the music video with the story of Eros and Psyche. I kind of like to think that ETA is a tribute to their debut, while Cool With You represents their growth and maturity throughout the year. I'd say Cool With You, Side B, and New Jeans are my favorite music videos of the lot. Probably more so Cool With You, because how on earth did they manage to book THE Tony Lung and Jung Ho Yeon? And rumor has it that V is going to be in the ASAP music video too? I really couldn't be prouder of these girls with what they've been able to accomplish in such a short period of time. The whole album is filled with stunners, but I do have one criticism. How am I supposed to function knowing that Get Up is only a 37 second interlude? I haven't felt this robbed since I found out Foreshadow by An Hype and wasn't made as a full length song. Hype is just cruel. Now I did mention their partnership with Coca Cola, so I may as well talk about their song Zero. I'm really mad that this song is for Coca Cola because the chorus ruins the entire song. It's so out of place. The beginning was so promising and felt so new jeans. Like, I don't want to be reminded of capitalism when I'm listening to K pop. I pay for Spotify Premium so I don't get ads when listening to music. Get this commercial out of my jams. I just hate that new jeans were given a song like this. I don't mind the fact that they did a song for Coca Cola. Heaps of K pop groups have done songs for other things like Pepsi, and they were fine and great, but this just feels like you're watching your favorite movie, but every time your favorite scene comes along, there's an ad break. That's exactly what it feels like listening to the song. I really wish that I could just ignore the chorus, but I don't think I could listen to this song just for the verses or even listen to it ironically. On first listen, I did not like Unforgiven. Partly because I was expecting something. I don't know, something grander? Something that feels a bit more epic? I was expecting a greater incorporation of the sample they used and more of the modern Western concept they hinted at in the concept photos, and also because Unforgiven originally is a Western film. But a few weeks later, all of a sudden, something just switched in my brain and I physically made myself search for the song and put it on. It was the same with Antifragile. I didn't instantly connect with the song at first, but I just needed more time to fully appreciate it for what it is and what it wanted to achieve. Now I think this song is an absolute gem and is my new obsession and dare I say it's their best title track to date. And that's saying something given how massive Fearless and Antifragile are. I'd say that the album overall, however, is weaker than the previous ones, but that's not to say the songs are trash because quite frankly, that's the complete opposite of the truth. Fear Not sounds like something Taylor Swift would have released in either her Fearless or Speak Now albums. Fire in the Belly gives me Shakira vibes and I love the retro vibes in No Return and Flash Forward. Again, I wasn't the biggest fan of Eve Psyche and the Bluebeard's wife at first, but after learning about the meaning of the song, I really do enjoy it. Upon reflection, I think the thing that initially turned me off Unforgiven and The Bluebeard's Wife was the choreography. Don't get me wrong, the girls devoured the choreographies for both songs and their stage presence was so immaculate this era, but I just can't get over how corny some, not all, of the parts of the Unforgiven choreography is, and I can't help but picture those two dancing dogs from Barbie and the Diamond Castle whenever I see the choreography. <laughs> Also, I can't help but see the choreography for Bluebeard's wife being replicated in a Zumba class. But to stress again, I mean this with no shade towards the members because they nevertheless served an absolutely iconic comeback. I am 
Queen Card being my third most played song in 2023 so far should be a very good indication of how in love I am with it. I was and still am so obsessed with this song. It reminds me of Want It by Itzy but with the 2000s punk element dialed up to 11. And also the music video for Queen Card has got to be one of my favourite MVs ever because the editing, the comedic elements, the reference to white chicks and the entire aesthetic were just sublime. Also the B-sides on the I Feel album are to die for. Allergy has that old school cube sound, Lucid reminds me of Sunmi's legendary solo debut song of 24 hours, and Paradise is clearly Escape's successor in title. One thing that I've come to observe in Idol's music videos lately is that every member has their moment to shine and it never feels like X member has the spotlight and the remainder of the group are just like their backup dancers. That's a criticism a lot of people had with Idol in their early days. They've always had such strong synergy as a group, but I think their sisterhood was intensified following Sujin's departure. Tomboy was like a phoenix rising from the ashes. It was as if they were saying, ha, huh, you thought you had seen the last of me? And then Nude was just iconic and was, in my opinion, their first music video that provided the audience with very thought-provoking social commentary disguised in catchy music. And I love that they're continuing this and solidifying this new image of the group. Also, I've got to mention their collaboration with 88 Rising. I Do is such an amazing song and I've always wanted Idol to do a heavily retro-inspired track since it's my favourite genre of music and more so because Idol did such an amazing job already with Change on the I Love mini album. Esper, La Seraphim and Idol delivered the ultimate pretty girl anthems in May. Like, Spicy just screams clueless and mean girls and brats. It feels like an American teen movie. I feel like this comeback was a make or break for Esper. As innovative as the AI concept was, it kind of became Esper's ball and chain once girls rolled around. This comeback just felt so refreshing for them. And I can definitely see Girls Generation or FX doing something like this in like 2013 or 14. The song on first listen reminded me of like Megan Trainor's Me Too and also Queen's Eye Yummy Yummy. I love Spicy so much and despite people's negative reaction to the sudden concept change, I think it sounds very Esper. Like it still has those heavy EDM beats just with a more bright and vibrant flavour that's reminiscent of something like Yeppy Yeppy. And also, dare I say, this is their best mini album since Savage. And that album has lucid dream, energy and I'll make you cry. And I think it's my favourite because it's their most well-rounded collection yet. Like I'm Unhappy is very Olivia Rodrigo sour era coded. Till We Meet Again is just like your classic end of concert song. And Thursday is currently battling it out with Lucid Dream now as my favourite Esper B-side. I don't think there's much left for me to say that hasn't already been said a hundred times before. I don't like Kitsch that much, but god damn do I love I Am. This album proved the haters wrong. After being the K-pop fandom's punching bag since debut, but let's be honest, the hate train began even before then, this song said that they don't care what people say. They're doing what they do best, they're living their dream, and inspiring and uplifting others to do the same. Hate them or love them, they're going to succeed and continue to thrive. So you can just take a seat and enjoy the ride. I absolutely love the entire album, but I can't act surprised because they're from Starship. Like, quality music is just in their DNA. Blue Blood and Next Page are my favourites, but overall I love how they were able to show just how versatile they are. I remember last year seeing heaps of people say that I've were just like a one-trick pony, they only know how to do like the same facial expressions over and over again and they only know how to express one certain vibe. And like this, this just proved them entirely wrong. And also side note, Not Your Girl reminds me of Sister and listening to it for the first time just made me so happy. <laughs> I'm quite indifferent to Love Me Like This, purely because it just doesn't match my personal taste in music, but I do have to appreciate that 
This is the first song of theirs which has been, you know, very positively received by the large majority of people, especially in South Korea. And now with their new comeback with Roller Coaster and Party O'Clock, their music has become a lot more palatable, is the word that I would use to describe it. I am a strong believer that Roller Coaster should have been the comeback title track and not the pre release. In fact, I thought it was the title track and Party O'Clock was the B side. But I do understand why it was made the title track. I really wish they dived deeper into the whole A Midsummer Night's Dream concept of the era and not just have used the Forest Fairy aesthetic because I feel like I've seen the music video for Roller Coaster and Party O'Clock, you know, lots of times before. Like just off the top of my head, the Party O'Clock music video reminds me a lot of Oh My Girl's Dun Dun Dance. GOT7 from memory used Shakespeare as inspiration for Not By The Moon and that was legendary so I really thought that NMIX, because you know, being NMIX and everything, would go down that classic vintage K-pop ethereal route a la G-Friend or Lovelies but mix it up with something else. But aside from this, I do like the songs and I'm glad 2023 has given them a second wind and the general public are seeing them in a different light. I'll be honest and say that I prefer watching the music video over listening to the song by itself. I feel like it's too one-noted for a title track, it's a bit too simple, as great as the message of the song is. I don't know, it feels a little lacklustre when not accompanied with the visuals and I think this would have been great as a pre-release track. The title track just blends in a little too well with the b-sides when I'm listening to the entire album. Now that's not necessarily a bad thing as it goes to show how cohesive the tracklist is, but with the way the title track is like, I think they should have gone with Attitude as the lead single instead. It sounds more fierce and sophisticated, which is something we haven't seen from Us9 do before. That is, in their title tracks at least. We got to see a glimpse of this side to them in Escape Room and Rewind last year. As alluded to before, in typical From Us9 fashion, the B-sides are where it's at, and the tracklist is chock full of self-love anthems. My standout favourites are Attitude, obviously, In the Mirror, Prom Night, What I Want, and My Night Routine. Also, I don't know if it's just me, but Don't Care sounds a bit similar to Eyes One's Mise en Scene, and also Eye Contact feels very Eyes One coded to me as well. And also, I'm not saying that From Us 9 are plagiarising any artists, but there are some similarities between this music video and Twice's Set Me Free in terms of like the vibe, the song, and also some of the outfits as well. Which definitely is not the members' fault, that's solely on Pledis. At this point, I feel like Natty's mother because I just want to tell her to never disappear on us like that again because she had me worried for years. Out of all of the pre-debut solos, Sugarcoat is definitely my favourite. And also, just as a side note, does anyone else think that Kitty Cat kind of reminds them of Royals by Lord? I'm not really a fan of the anti-drop in the debut song, since I think a grander chorus would definitely go with the 90s meets swing vibe they're going for. The anti-drop kind of makes that part of the song sound a bit dated, like it's from the mid-2010s, but overall the quality of the song is undeniable anyways. I especially like the little ad-lib sprinkled here and there because it just shows how incredibly talented vocally this entire group is. I can't help but imagine what it would be like if Hot Issue was still active. Like, imagine the amount of star power that would be under S2 Entertainment. Like, how does a company with so much going for them fumble the bag so badly? <laughs> It's official, XG is now one of my favourite girl groups of all time. Shooting Star and Left Right were on repeat for a long time at the beginning of the year, and I didn't think they'd be able to top it. But boy was I dead wrong. The alarms that opened the song served as a warning, cause Girl Gang completely obliterated my world. How do they keep getting better and better? Like, their growth after every release is insane. This song was such a serve, and don't even get me started on the music videos, my word. 
the energy and the brazen and unapologetic confidence that emulates from this song is so addictive. It's become my new mantra and I literally listen to this song on my drive to work and uni every day. I said this a long time ago about Itzy when they came out with Mafia in the morning and I'll say it again now. I just want to join this girl gang and do crime with them. Words cannot explain how much I love this subunit. I only wish they were called Mimosa because I think that would have been really cute, but I understand how hard that would have been to trademark. This is the very reason why we need more women groups in K-pop. So someone can deliver these absolute delicacies to the table. I love the references to famous artworks and how it ties into the message of the song, which I think is really clever. It, it's kind of like what Red Velvet did with Feel My Rhythm. And this is probably the best Twice music video I've seen in a while, just because of how undeniably gorgeous it is. Also, side note, in a way, this song kind of reminds me of Ariana Grande's God is a Woman music video, and I love it even more for that. And just like the feather in the final scene of the So What music video, my girls have been reborn from the flames. Luna heading into different companies had me worried that they'd lose their original sound, so I was beyond happy when I first listened to the album's highlight medley because I was like, holy shit, Odd Eye Circle really is back. So many years have passed since Odd Eye Circle had a unit comeback, and that was one of the things I had wished BBC had done since each unit had their own distinct style and sound and would have been a great strategy to further use in order to reap in more fans. I had dearly missed the hyper dream pop sound of early Luna so much. New Jeans had satiated my hunger for it a lot last year, but it just wasn't enough because Luna just has a special place in my heart. Plus, I've said this before and I'll say it again, Luna walks so New Jeans could fly. I'd say that though Air Force One is a great title track, it's one of the weakest songs on the mini album. I think the chorus could have been better since I don't think it fits the concept because it sounds very playful, while their concept is a bit like Not Friends meets Sweet Crazy Love meets La Seraphim's Impurities. Je ne sais quoi, in my opinion, is the best song on the track list and I'm glad it was chosen as the promotional B-side because it reminds me of some of Luna's best songs like Uncover and Love Letter. I'm really glad that even though it's been ages since their last unit comeback, they were still able to recapture their original sound and that is most likely due to Jaden Jong, their OG creative director when they were under BBC and who's now their CEO under Mod House. It's Luna, so I don't even have to mention how much I love the visuals of the music video, the easter eggs, and of course, the Heejin cameo. The last couple of months have been really shitty because of BBC, but this comeback is a really good sign that things are turning around for the better, and I really hope that we see all 12 together again in the future. Thank you so much for making it to the end of the video. I didn't get to talk about every single girl group comeback or debut in this video, but chances are I will definitely be talking about it in part 3, just because I didn't have much to say about them, but I nevertheless still enjoyed. Be on the lookout for part 2, and until then, stay groovy, stay safe, keep smiling, love y'all, and bye bye.